Hey gang, Scott here, continuing our series about masking an on one photo raw on one effects. This video is about combining the masking tools, how to use these various masking tools I've shown you so far in the series together. And I've mentioned that several times in the series so far. You can combine the masking tools to get the results that you need. Uh, and, and that's true, right? That, that's not, that's not going to change. What I'm going to give you in this video is a little more guidance on what order to do things in because there are some masking tools that will start the mask from the beginning again, like clobbers any work you've done previously. And you have undo, thankfully, but I can avoid the frustration for you that, that I had to go through when I was figuring out, all right, which one of these tools is, is going to clobber my mask and which one isn't. So uh, that's the focus of this video. Let's get started. When you're approaching a masking job, it, it's best to start large and whittle your way down. And uh, I'm, I'm a kind of a cut to the chase kind of guy. So here's the breakdown for me, like masking in, in three steps. The first step is going to be the very broad uh, overall mask. And I'm going to use one of four tools to do that. AI quick mask, luminosity mask, color range mask, or sky AI if I'm in photo raw. Any one of those four, because I'm thinking I need to adjust a certain color, a certain tonal region, uh, I have uh, an odd object and I'll use AI quick mask for it, or I'm working with a sky. And any one of those tools will clobber any other mask you've already done. So that's your starting point. Second, you use your line masks or your graduated mask, you know, your masking bug, the adjustable gradient if you're working with locals. That's step two because those will be, um, they'll build upon anything you've done with AI based tools or tonal or color based masking tools. Third is then your brushes, your custom brushes, your classic brushes, perfect brush. That's how you get yourself down into a, a, a crisp finished masking job. And you know, that's it. I mean, you know, if you want to stop the video and go on to the next thing for your day, go for it. I'm going to show you an example or two of how to combine these tools to get some interesting looks. Uh, but first, I want to show you like this, um, what I mean, like this clobber nature of, of something you know being uh, over overwriting or destroying your mask. So uh, let, let, let's take a look here. All right, this photo here, uh, we've got uh, you know this nice seascape. You know, my my certainly my bailiwick. Let me add some dynamic contrast. I always like to punch the rocks up a little bit, and uh, I don't really want to add contrast everywhere. Looking at this photo. Most of the rocks are kind of orange, so maybe I'd start with a color range mask, turn that on, and then pick you know an orange tone that's out here in the rocks. It seems to be still much too broad of a range, so I start dialing that down. Going, okay, it's kind of working, but I'm I'm losing stuff that's in the the deep shadows there on some of these rocks. Uh, the 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 rock is still there, but the the shadow tone is making it outside that color range. Shadow tone, okay. I start to think about luminosity masks. Oh, I want to target those shadows. Um, all right, let me uh, let me add a lumen. And I hit the lumen button, and everything just changed. Like that mask swatch there. Now I'll do this again. Undo. I'm back at the color range mask. I'll turn on the view of that. Lumen button. It just completely resets it, right? So lumen is one of these clobbering tools. It will start the mask from ground zero and say, lumen mask, no problem. You want one? I'll build one for you. And it will do for the entire photo. Color range mask works the same way. If I go back in here and say, oh, give me color range, it's going to change it again to add that default, like, you know, salmon color. So color range, luminosity, those are clobbering tools. The AI quick mask is probably the uh, the worst of them all in so far as when I click AI, what just happened? My entire screen went white because the AI tool says, you're going to tell me what to mask. So I'm going to start with the default for this filter, which is a pure white mask. So all this stuff is gone. I got to turn off that, that mask view there. Uh, and, you know, this is where I'd say, okay, I want to, uh, you know, keep the foreground or or drop the background, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? Um, but my my point with this exercise, and if I were in uh, Photo Raw, the same would be true for um, for Sky. I'm not in Photo Raw, so I don't have that that option there. But if I had Photo Raw and I chose Sky AI, 
that would be clobbering as well. So that's so why I say start with one of those four. Quick Mask AI, your Color Range Mask, Luminosity Mask, or the Sky AI Mask. Start with that and then refine. So um, back to this example, I'll go with that Lumen Mask. Click on that thing there. Let's, uh, let's restart here, you know, confusing where I left off. Lumen Mask, okay, I've got my Luminosity Mask. Let me leave that mask view on. Now let's say, um, well, I like the luminosity mask. I like my dynamic contrast. I don't want anything in the sky. Well, I have a gradient tool, right? That's the next stage that we can use. And notice I can use the gradient tool in combination with the luminosity mask. And actually in such a way that not only do I get the ability to remove it from the sky, which is what I was interested in, I can fade off this contrast, very intricate contrast boost with the gradient. So I'm getting more contrast in the foreground, nuanced by the luminosity mask, and then faded into the background, courtesy of the gradient mask. I could continue this um, for whatever reason. Let's say, you know, those trees and things in the background there, I don't want those. I can use a brush paint out. Uh, let's make the size a little bit bigger. And that becomes additive as well. Maybe this I'd even get a little fancy lower opacity and kind of take some of that stuff out out there that I don't want. So I can combine all these things here to get that look that I'm really after. And that's a little subtle. Let me pop the surreal on that just so you can see it in the video there before and after. You notice Lots in the foreground, some in the midground, and nothing in the background. So that is really um, one example of how combining the tools gives you a very powerful result. In this case, I'm using dynamic contrast. You could do the same thing with any filter. You want to do some really intricate tinting on something, but you don't want it to be everywhere. You know, uh, you're using a color range mask, you're using a luminosity mask, you're doing something and then refining it with a gradient. Um, yeah, that, that's a powerful combination. But the key takeaway is start with those big masking tools, the ones that affect the entire photo or they build the mask from the tones in your photo and then whittle down through gradients and lines, and then finally to brushes. Uh, let me show you one more example. This is a, this is kind of a cool one. It's almost like a, a spotlight type look. And uh, I like to use this a lot with glows. If you watched the luminosity masking video, you heard me mention the glow look and luminosity masks. I, I love doing those combinations. So I had a glow here and I like, I like radiance. So let's take a look at what Rich has to offer. Rich is, 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 a, is a, a little more subtle than Radiant, but I'm going to use Radiance here and maybe dial that back some. And this is where the luminosity mask comes in. Let me leave that at full strength because light things glow, dark things don't. If I do that uh, adjustment there, that automatically tempers the glow significantly, right? No luminance mask. Luminance mask. I'm protecting those dark shadows, and uh, you know I, I like that look. Can go one step further. I've added this luminosity mask. Now I can add a gradient, you know, a bug with the edges shape, and to see what's really going on, let me turn the view on for the mask. We're looking at the mask now. This is what the lumen button built for us, and I might bias this a little bit more so we're we're uh protecting the shadows, but I want to get those those highlights popping more. So I want to get those leaves to be even brighter, right? Something like that. Now, gradient, shape of edges, and look at this. I have this spotlight that I can target this very intricate glow and even, you know, say angle it, have it coming in from the, the upper part of the scene where the, the brightest part of the, the sky was so that it's just shaping onto my subjects here. Let's turn off our view now and look at the glow before and after, before 
and after, right? These, these subtle touches, and I can still adjust things and, and get this positioned the way it needs to be. But this is just another example of combining these masking tools and getting some very, very intricate, detailed adjustments with not so heavy lifting on your masking tools. So combining them in the correct order so you don't clobby your mask. You know, if I were to go in and say, oh, now let me do a color range mask, I would destroy this work because it would go back to the beginning. So uh, follow those, uh, those, those steps I outlined earlier in the video as far as what tools to use when, and look for the opportunities to combine things. A few good combinations, and you are going to have some some just great masks with little lifting. And it'll really take your uh, your photo processing to a new level. Hope you found the video interesting. And if you've got questions, go ahead and drop them below. Until next time, my name is Scott Davenport. Have fun.